Hello everyone! Welcome back to our channel. That's that's better. We're Chloe and Matthew, two wine-loving foodies who have set out to explore the world one bite, sip and slurp at a time. In this series, we're exploring every iconic wine region in Australia to get a lowdown on the juice, the people and what makes them special. Today, we, well, we're actually sneaking in a bit of a wine region that we weren't expecting to go to, but we were passing through, so we were like, why not? Okay, we, let's go. <laughs> we're in Geelong. Let's go figure it out. Let's get some wine. Hey, Pinot Noir at Geelong Pinot. Marie and I set up this place 27 years ago. Why did we come here is a good question. Uh, this was in one of the oldest wine growing regions in Australia. This was all vibrant vineyards all through the Geelong region. Phylloxera came and all of the vineyards were pulled out. This vineyard, when we discovered it, the old farmer told us that it actually planted three things here. White Burgundy, Red Burgundy and Hermitage. As it turned out, they're the three varieties that we were most interested in pursuing. <laughs> it's kind of fortuitous that we ended up with a place like this. So what we have here is int super interesting. Uh, you can see all this black rock, a lot of basalt. Basalt comes straight out of volcanoes. It shows that the land here is quite young. If you look at European soils or young soils, they're all the great uh, wine growing areas are grown in the young <laughs> Below the basalt layer is what the bedrock was here and this is what really brought us in this area, it's limestone. All the great vineyards that grow Pinot Chardonnay in the world are on limestone. The thing that indicated limestone for us in the name of this region, which is called Geelong, the old Aboriginal First Nations name meaning white cliff. People were here 50,000, 60,000 years ago, would have seen the original white cliffs before they got covered by basalt flows, so the name stuck. These four wines are all about terroir. So the first wine is from our vineyard called Hat Rock. It's down near the coast, or maybe a kilometre from the beach. If you know the geography of the bay where Melbourne is, there's the bay side and the peninsula is called the Bellarine. This vineyard is on the inside. Prevailing winds and the effect of the sea is from the shallow bay. It's on black clay on limestone. The bay is warmer because it's shallower water. So this is our warmest site. So this one here is also on the Bellarine, but this vineyard, Suma Park, there is nothing between this and the Antarctic. Okay. Okay, so it's cold. Mm -hmm. Not only is it cold, it is on red clay on limestone. What we see here is a different expression of Pinot Noir. While the first wine has that black clay, sort of Mount Etna sort of wine style, this one now is looking at that sort of fresh green raspberry, fresh white cherry as opposed to the first one where you're seeing much more darker fruit flavors. The next wine is the 2017 from Springbank. We should have been able to show you the 2018, that was the original plan, but unfortunately we've sold out of the 2018. The site is different, it's actually quite close to us here, maybe 13 kilometers from here. It's in the Murrubal Valley. The soil here is very different. This looks like a hill out of Burgundy. It's red clay limestone marl. So I worked in neuroscience, I'm a neuroscientist by trade, but but uh, what got me into wine? Uh, there's a long and sordid story, but essentially at the age of 30, I decided to set up a small vineyard and then keep it as my hand grenade with the pin pulled out, just waiting for someone to piss me off. So I could open my hand and disappear to another world. And one day someone pissed me off a little bit too much and I opened my hand and found myself here. That was more than yeah, 27 years ago. Last one. This wine is called Lock 4. This is from our vineyard back here. This is the coolest site. It is on the black clay basalt limestone. A little bit more complexity. Pretty decent one. That was amazing. Awesome. I'm so impressed with your painter. So I'm really happy. <laughs> you happy? Yeah. Got good pinot. And I'm duck. I'm picking duck. <laughs> you got an extra little treat. You got the 19, 19 and the 2006. 
of their top cuvee. Which is, for the people that don't know, like me? It's their top, it's their top flagship wine. Cuvee is generally a blend. Of different vineyards. But frequently top vineyards or top wines are blends. It's, it's very rare that the best wines are single vineyard. So this is the 19. Yeah, it is good. The nose is just more complex and more complete. Oh, whoa. It just hits all the spots. Yeah. It's so complete. This is the 2006. Uh -oh. oh my god, that nose. It's almost got like a, like a caramel or something. It's that pretty scotch thing I get. Yeah. I could just keep smelling it. Like next winery? Yeah. Next winery. Next. Seeing that place was so successful, we had to check out somewhere else. We're on the other side of the valley now. So we were in Mirabool, and that's where, as you heard Ray say, the soil's there. Over here, the soils are more granitic. So the wines are supposed to have, or will have more structure and complexity to them. So we're gonna kind of check it out and see what's different. Let's go. Let's drink some wine. Hey, baby. You know how moo cows go moo? No. Well then what the llamas do? Spit. <laughs> Del Rios is a family owned winery and restaurant founded in 1996 on the slopes of Mount Anarchy, the extinct volcano that the region pulls its name from. So right now they have seven different tastings available. Uh, one of them being because it's a Pinot Noir celebration this weekend, but at the Pinot tasting, two of the Pinots are on the other tasting we're getting. Long story short, we asked to be switched. Can we take those two Pinots out and just put in some white? They focused on traditional influences with contemporary techniques to develop their own individual style. Okay, I might be nitpicking now, but I think we've been here for probably about half an hour. Creeping up to 40 minutes. We still haven't had anything. <laughs> but it looks pretty. Quite a lot of tertiary notes, a little, little bit of that Alta Heidi sort of sherry character. So I'm still quite a lot of sort of cherry character and that sort of tertiary savoriness as well. 2017 Pinot? 2017. The palate flips around. It's a little bit green on the nose, but it's really full body on the palate. It's got good fruit, like good bright raspberry, but it's not bright cherry coke too. Like it's got all those really good secondary and tertiary Pinot characters. That's a nice one. Okay, Matthew didn't see this, so I'm literally filming this just so you can see it. Dry edged. So far, I'd have to say that Geelong is a highly underrated wine region. So seeing as we picked up this bottle of Nebbiolo by Lethbridge yesterday, we thought that it called for some Italian food. Nebbiolo obviously takes me back to Piedmont. So I thought of what kind of pasta we could have. It's not going to be properly proper Piemontese because we don't have tagerine, which is that really thin pasta that's like made majority with egg yolk 40 egg yolks like per serving i think it's something ridiculous like that don't quote me on it so uh, we picked up some sort of italian pasta Str stronza pretti which is actually from the middle of italy it's more like umbria le marche emilia romagna seemed like a good thing to go with tonight's dish so I'll show you the sauce nice and healthy <laughs> At least it will keep us warm. Next ingredient. So simple. Doesn't look pretty, but the view looks pretty. And Rexy will eat anything, so. I don't know. <laughs> Most variety we've seen in a wine shop yeah. in Australia. They got Tempe Vandal. Okay, they 
even have Valdostano wine. We're gonna get some 2023 CDP ladies. It's a really good price and they're not waxed, so get it. Stay down. Should we try some cider? Let's try some cider. The other three are not all an apple base. It's just not as dry as dry. Okay. It's pretty good. So clean, isn't it? Yeah, very clean. We try hard to be clean, except when you get to the stuff, the then we want to be dirty. <laughs> I like it dry. I really like it dry. As I say, I didn't drink it until we made the dry. And then after making the uh, I've shifted again. That's yum. It's really good. Yeah, no, That's fun. That'd be fun in a cocktail. Yeah. Our trip through Geelong was far too brief, with some amazing Pinot Noirs tempting us to stay longer. If you're a fan of Burgundy, the wines here will definitely make you stop and think. However, we had an appointment down the road with the Greenstone and Shiraz of Heathcote. Join us as we explore this hidden gem that may be making the best Shiraz in Australia. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button below. This is one you won't want to miss.